Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles, and I hope you'll pardon me for this kind of short one here, but I watched the rally tonight, and then yesterday with the hearing, and then tomorrow's another hearing, and I'm kind of running out of steam, guys, because it's NaNo, it's National Novel Writing Month, and I'm really working very hard at getting my novel edited this month. Been really working on that hard. But I wanted to bring this to you because I think this is important for all of us to know. In my video that you saw yesterday, I had clips of several of the Republicans who did some good questioning in the hearing. Well, she was one of them, and I put hers up front, even though it wasn't chronologically up front, because I wanted to make sure that people saw it. And, you know, sometimes people will click on a video and not continue on, but I really wanted to make sure people saw hers. She did an excellent job. And here's what she said. This is from the GOP. This is a quote of hers. This was an abject failure for the Democrats and for Adam Schiff. So <laughs> she really did do an excellent job. And I love seeing the Republican women because the left has a tendency to think they're the only ones that can have women politicians represent them. And it's like, no, we have some very intelligent women. In yesterday's video, I also showed you a tweet by this guy, this Matthew Dowd, who is an ABC News political analyst. So let me show you that tweet. Here it is. And this is what he said, Elise Stefanik is a perfect example of why just electing someone because they are a woman or a millennial doesn't necessarily get you the leaders we need. Okay, yeah, I understand that it may not totally come across as very misogynist, <laughs> but it can be taken that way too. And he didn't even capitalize her last name there. So that was something he posted. And then this is kind of a little bit of what happened. So he deleted the tweet and apologized. And he said, I in no way meant to suggest that we don't need women or millennial leaders. In fact, the opposite is true. And I have advocated for that. I will be more careful in how I phrase my thoughts lesson learned. Okay. And she was gracious and said, apology accepted. But then she said, ABC politics should be ashamed of your comment. This is one of the reasons young women don't run for office. So she nailed him on it. And, you know, there were just some reactions about it. And here's another one. Wow. People, especially in the media, love to bring down GOP women while arguing that the future is female. And Elise Stefanik is a rock star in the GOP, and we're grateful she decided to run years ago. Also, you'll probably regret letting your misogyny show. And this was the tweet that I just showed you. So there were several of them. I mean, it was a whole thing going back and forth. If you put her in last night, if you put in a hashtag or just put her name in, you got all kinds of stuff that was going on because, wow, you know, Elise Stefanik is the reason why women are running for office. Keep fighting the good fight. But she was gracious about it. She just made sure that he knew what he had done was not acceptable. And see, they don't have any problems insulting women who are Republicans. Conservative women are fair game for them. And that's one reason why I made that shirt that says, beautiful, intelligent, conservative, and 100% woman. Because we women need to make sure they know we are a force to be reckoned with. And they think they've got a corner on the women's vote. I think they're going to be surprised. Because more and more of us are starting to go, wait, we're not going to just vote for someone just because they're a woman. We're going to vote for the best candidate. And right now, it seems like the best candidate is conservative. Hmm. So I wanted to make sure I showed you this. And also, here's something that somebody pointed out, this Tim Cameron pointed out, that she actually helped that guy write a book when she was a student at Harvard and Dowd thanks her years later by writing a, a sexist tweet saying that she only got elected to Congress because she's a millennial woman, uh, you know, and she's like, oh, thank you for reminding me of this. I had forgotten that Dowd was involved. She really sounds like a very gracious woman. She's handling it well, but I'm glad she did that. So there's an update on that one. And then I wanted to show you this because 
I think there is a master troll gene that has been passed on in that family because Donald Trump Jr. did a great job here. Happy birthday, Whoopi. Give my best to your fugitive friend, Roman Polanski. <laughs> and that's who he mentioned on The View. If you haven't seen the clip of him on The View, you need to see it because he did a great job there. And thanks for hating on me and KG so much. It got me to number one New York Times bestseller. You're welcome for the highest ratings in months. Perhaps have someone on the show who doesn't hate America. Triggered. And the funny thing is, the name of his book is Triggered. And they were the perfect example of what triggered is because they just went ballistic with him on there but the funniest thing is yeah like I said he ended up getting up to the number one place on the New York Times bestseller list and the show itself had the highest ratings in months so yeah I wanted to let you know on that and then this one I think this is the article that POTUS mentioned in the Louisiana rally on Thursday night documents released by Ukrainian general prosecutor's office reveal millions funneled to who Hunter Biden and the John Kerry family hmm look at this it's coming out folks this is pretty big. And if you go through this whole thing, I'm not going to go through it tonight, but, you know, you can read through it. It's got all the tweets and tell everything about it. Leaked documents from the Ukrainian general prosecutor's office indicate complex money transfers from foreign sources into the control of a slush fund owned and operated by Devin Archer, John Kerry Sr., John Kerry Jr., Heinz Jr., and Hunter Biden. Yep, there it is. And according to counterintelligence in Latvia, around $4 million was obtained by Burisma Holding Limited, which was then transferred to Hunter Biden and Devin Archer. And he's got the documents here. So, you know, you've got all these. Of course, that one has a lot of Russian in it. But anyway, so you can go through and see the whole thing. It describes the money transfer of all of this. Yep. And it's all going to who? Same people transferred to Devin Archer and Hunter Biden, and then these two people as well. So, yeah, it just goes on, and there's all kinds of stuff here. All of these transfers, they are all documented, and we now have the documents. And from what I hear, if you watched my previous video where Senator Johnson and Senator Grassley sent off a letter asking the State Department for any correspondence that dealt with Hunter Biden or Burisma Holdings, those documents probably are going to play a bigger role. It's also important to know that I think Senator Johnson has announced that he plans on subpoenaing Hunter Biden and Devin Archer. So this could be very interesting. A lot of stuff's going to happen. And if you've been following the 17th letter of the alphabet, you know a lot of this stuff already, and you know that the documentation has been there, and we've just been waiting for it to come out. So it looks like maybe it's starting to come out, and yes, that snowball is rolling down the hill, and there's nothing that's going to be able to stop it. The video that I'm working on for Saturday morning is going to be the Chuck Grassley link that the 17th letter of the alphabet gave, but I've been able to dig up some other stuff around it. And he says it's very important to read and reread. So I think it's got some really good stuff in there that you're going to want to know about. So that'll be Saturday morning. So anyway, that's what I've got for you on this one. I want to thank you for stopping by and I'll see y'all later.